Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is a disease of the white blood cells. These cells are born in the bone marrow, they travel throughout the blood to the lymph nodes where they get an education. And they, when they get to the lymph node, they're naive, they're sort of like teenagers, where they're all grown up on the outside, but they haven't experienced the world. So they go into the lymph node and they get presented little bits of bacteria and viruses from the environment, and they get an education in how to fight these bacteria and viruses. How to do that is they actually make mutations in their genetic code to try to generate um, antibodies that will fight these bacteria and viruses perfectly. If they don't make a perfect match, these are cells that are ordinarily die and then there's new ones born that go back to the lymph node. In the case of lymphoma, they pick up mutations that are not normal and tell them to continue, continue to live even though they haven't made a perfect match. And then these cells continue to grow clonally, so the same cell over and over again. And that's um, how lymphoma arises. Diffuse large B cell lymphoma is an aggressive disease, so symptoms usually occur um, in a short time frame. Patients can experience fatigue, um, night sweats where they have to change all their sheets in pajamas at night, so drenching night sweats. They might have weight loss, um, they might have fevers and increased infections. And so these are some signs to start consider going to your doctor to be evaluated for lymphoma. So diagnosis is um, complicated for lymphomas. We need to have um, a really good biopsy. So often patients get what's called a fine needle aspirin, FNA, initially, and that's not really enough to make a diagnosis of different subtypes of lymphoma. So we require an excisional or an incisional lymph node biopsy where there's a, a basically a big piece of tissue that comes out. And this enables our pathologist to do multiple testing on that tissue. Um, we do flow cytometry, um, immunosochemistry, which looks at the uh, different markers within and on the outside of the cells. We look at the architecture of the way the cells are aligning in the lymph node and how they're interacting with other cells. And we also do genetic studies like uh, fish cytogenetics and even molecular uh, genetic studies. So we do need a lot of material to make an accurate diagnosis of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So the good news about diffuse large B cell lymphoma is it's highly treatable and highly curable. For most patients, RCHOP chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. There are other types of therapies out there. There is more intensive therapies for some patients we consider, and there are clinical trials evaluating adding targeted therapies to RCHOP, but right now RCHOP chemotherapy remains the standard of care for most patients with diffuse large B cell lymphoma. RCHOP chemotherapy is a standard therapy when patients are initially diagnosed with diffuse large B cell lymphoma. But if lymphoma comes back after treatment, right now our standard of care is to try a second type of chemotherapy, a different type of chemotherapy. And there are many different options in that setting. Clinical trials are also a terrific option at this point because we believe that we can improve upon the standard um, second line chemotherapy options. Usually the standard is to go from a second chemotherapy to an autologous stem cell transplant and that is also a curative option. Um, but we're starting to look at the timing at which CAR T therapy should be involved and how we can incorporate novel therapies um, in the second line therapy to reduce toxicities and to improve on responses in the relapse setting. So CAR T therapy was recently approved for relapse refractory diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So this is um, a technology that's available for patients who have um, progressed after having two different types of chemotherapy. How it works is we take um, the patient's own cells, isolate their T lymphocytes, and change them in the laboratory so they will recognize the lymphoma cells. These cells are then given back to the patient where so they're the patient's own cells that have been re-engineered and then go to the lymphoma and attack the lymphoma. So we're basically redirecting your own immune system to fight lymphoma. With this, there are some toxicities that can happen. Um, because you're waking up your immune system, essentially, you're having a brisk immune response. So that could be fevers, 
Um, your blood pressure can go up or down. You can have shortness of breath. These are the types of side effects that we're seeing with CAR-T. They're usually very well managed and you have a whole team that's uh, taking care of you when patient, you know, getting CAR-T therapy. We see that a um, you know, little more than half of patients respond to CAR-T therapy and those who do seem to be having a lasting effect. So it's a great option for patients who have not responded to standard chemotherapy approaches. So there are many novel therapies for diffuse arch B cell lymphoma that are in clinical development right now. There are some targeted therapies looking to try to stop some of the biology that's driving diffuse arch B cell lymphoma. Some examples include targeting BCL2, which is an anti-apoptotic protein, so this protects against programmed cell death. Um, one of those drugs is called venetoclax, and it's being studied alone and also in combination with chemotherapy for diffuse arch B cell lymphoma. There are drugs that are targeting epigenetics, and where epigenetics is how we change how genes are expressed without actually changing the genes. So we're changing epi, the part that's on top of the genes. Um, and one such drug is called tezametastat, which is being um, evaluated both as a single agent and with chemotherapy for diffuse Rh B cell lymphoma. There are also novel antibodies to attack the surface markers of diffuse Rh B cell lymphoma, and some of these antibodies have attached to them a chemotherapy warhead. So they enable um, chemotherapy to be directly targeted to diffuse Rh B cell lymphoma cells. One such drug um, uh, targets uh, CD79B and brings in chemotherapy. And a clinical trial called the Polaric study is looking at polatuzumab in combination with RCHOP chemotherapy to see if this is, improves upon um, RCHOP. So if you're newly diagnosed with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, I do recommend you gather information. I do recommend you ca you're cautious about where you gather information. This is not something you know, to go online and just start searching in any website because you'll get all different kinds of information that's usually not accurate. So it's really best to go to sources that are well verified, that are using you know, accurate information, and the Lymphoma Research Foundation is an excellent resource for that. They also have the ability to connect you with other patients who have been through um, similar diagnoses and treatment, and I do think it's important to um, sp speak to others to find out how their experience went. Um, everyone's unique and, and individual in their um, lymphoma diagnosis and how treatment goes, but it is good to get some outside perspective sometimes. It's also great to sort of rally up the troops. Anyone who's around you that could be supportive is always helpful um, when you're starting to go through a new diagnosis of lymphoma and, and treatment. Um, it's important to take notes when you speak to your doctor and don't be afraid to ask questions. Usually your doctor is going to be telling you, you know, a textbook of information on your first visit and it's really impossible for anyone to understand and, and remember all of that. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Write them down when you're at home, in the middle of the night, keep, them, keep a pad by your bedside and, and keep all these um, questions ready so you can you know, remember to ask your, your physician. It's not a bad idea sometimes to get a second opinion, but I would stress that um, sometimes you need to get started with treatment quickly. So um, plan those things early and then you know, once you have um, you know, two opinions or you don't necessarily need to have two opinions, when you feel comfortable with your care plan, then just get started. So there's a lot of hope for diffuse Rh B cell lymphoma patients. First of all, this is a highly curable disease. Um, and so when we treat patients, we strive for cure. Secondly, there are so many new opportunities on the horizon with different targeted therapies that are being developed to target biology that's driving different types of diffuse Rh B cell lymphoma. We're getting better at further subdividing what's um, uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma in different entities, and we're hoping that these sort of uh, subclassifications uh, will help uh, better identify how the lymphoma is growing in each individual, so we can then apply personalized medicine to patients based on their own individual diffuse large B cell lymphoma. New ways to evaluate genetic um, dysfunction are coming to light, which are uh, more rapid, so we can get these results faster, and then we can try to apply treatment to um, specific molecular changes in each 
um, patient's lymphoma. So try to really individualize treatment and make it more personal.